Thank you very much, Madam Chairwoman. I apologize for being a couple minutes late. Uh, I want to thank you, uh, Madam Chairwoman, for holding this hearing today on addressing uh, disasters in cities and the recommendations of the uh, U.S. Conference of Mayors. Um, in January, uh, as everybody knows, the U.S. Conference of Mayors staffed, Stafford Act Reform Task Force issued its recommendations on how we can better improve and prepare, really, and mitigate against and respond uh, to uh, future disasters. The task force began its work in September. And it included representatives from a number of cities, including two in Florida, I might add, and uh, we're very, very proud of that. Unfortunately, it's because Florida has too much experience uh, in these issues. Not something that we've done by choice, mayors, as you know. Uh, uh, the chair of this task force uh, is uh, Mayor Nagan of uh, New Orleans, and we thank him for being here today. As a member from the state of Florida, a state that has uh, seen and continues to see its share of disasters, I particularly appreciate uh, the experience and work that the task force members put into developing their recommendations. Look, you know, we all know that Hurricane Katrina was a wake-up call, a big wake-up call. It has now been nearly five years since uh, Katrina hit the Gulf Coast and devastated parts of Louisiana, Mississippi, Texas, and Alabama. And since that time, I think Congress has taken a number of important steps to strengthen FEMA and our nation's emergency uh, management capability, including not limited to, but including passing the Post-Katrina Reform Act. But uh, while the legislation took important steps to improve preparedness and response, there's obviously a lot more work uh, that remains uh, to be done. Uh, for example, all too often recovery uh, following a major disaster has been slowed by red tape, bureaucratic red tape, and by inflexible policies in some cases. And the impact of this red tape is especially magnified following a large-scale disaster uh, when assistance is critical uh, to rebuilding local communities. And we know that that's a long and arduous and difficult process. In hearing after hearing, uh, we have received testimony about the slow and the, uh, you know, that, that slow process which communities uh, have to try to navigate and have to try to figure out in many cases. Congresswoman, Congressman Gao, who is uh, sitting now as ranking member, and again, thank you, sir, for, for starting while, and, I, and again, I apologize to you and the chairwoman for being a little late, uh, has worked tirelessly to cut through this bureaucratic, uh, through the bureaucracy, and free up uh, funding for the uh, recovery in Louisiana. And I, again, once again, want to publicly, as I've done before, uh, thank him uh, for his tireless efforts uh, on, in trying to get that done. Last year, ranking member Mike uh, hosted two roundtables um, at his at, at Congressman Gao's re request to bring together FEMA and the state and local representatives to try to work through some of that funding uh, uh, backlog. And last year, a new arbitration process was established to expedite recovery funding, which really has freed up more funds uh, for the rebuilding of Louisiana. But, and again, but it should not have to take roundtables and meetings and arbitration panels to cut through the bureaucratic red tape. Uh, responsible changes to the Stafford Act and FEMA policies can go a long way to speed up the recovery of communities devastated after natural disasters like hurricanes. Uh, we understand that Administrator Fugate, as you all know, somebody who uh, has vast experience, is committed to reviewing FEMA's policies, to examining the ways to streamline and improve FEMA's role in assisting, assisting state and local communities. For example, allowing for the mitigation uh, reconstruction uh, of, of uh, damaged structures would make more sense in many cases than simply elevating old structures to mitigate against flooding, but which there's little to protect against wind. Again, those are some common sense ideas. This is just one of many examples of changes that can be done administratively without requiring Congress to act without legislation. And this Congress, um, uh, I worked with Chairwoman Norton um, of the subcommittee, along with Chairman Overstar and Ranking Member Micah, on H.R. 3377, the Stafford Act Bill, which was ordered, reported in November. That bill includes provisions uh, intended to improve preparedness and mitigation, including incentives for building codes, uh, improving the nation's public alert and warning system, and providing for the transfer of excess goods and housing units to local communities. It also includes proposal uh, recommended by Congressman Gal to provide more flexibility in response to widespread disasters. As we move forward on this important piece of legislation, input from you all, from the mayors, 
is frankly critical. I mean, you know you're on the front lines uh, of, this, of these issues. So good planning and response to uh, a disaster starts with you all, right, at the local level, local and then state levels. And we know that many mayors and local communities, unfortunately, have uh, firsthand knowledge, uh, practical knowledge of what may need to be improved and may need to be changed. And I say, I mean, obviously, it's not experience. I know that all of you wish you didn't have to have, uh, but unfortunately, uh, you do have it. And uh, we've had instances in the past, and we know that they're going to come again in the future. I hope that today we will be able to examine closely the recommendations of the U.S. Conference of Mayors to better inform our, our uh, consideration of changes to the Stafford Act. I want to uh, first, again, thank you, the witnesses, for uh, joining us today. And I would be remiss without thanking once again the chairwoman of this committee for her leadership, uh, not only in this issue, but uh, for her leadership. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. Thank you very much, Mr.